And you know I had Step on Marcus J live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. I like how that ended. Ooh, la, ooh, la, ooh, la. What's up? What's, what's, what's up, man? I mean, you kind of told us a little bit about that song, but tell us a little bit about when you were writing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, th- was this one of those, you know, let me just go in there and write this song real quick. Or was this one of those, let me take my time. And I write took my this. time on this one. Yeah? I took my time. And it's crazy. I found this dude on SoundCloud. Uh, 4JEI on SoundCloud. And I was just on SoundCloud, and I was listening to random instrumentals. And this one popped up. And I was like, hum, 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 hum. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, ah! I, was, I, was, I felt it. Immediately felt it. And the video pops in my head. This is how I write. Like, I hear a beat, and the visual will pop in my head. And then my bars narrate the video. Okay. Or the visual that I see. Okay. So to me, it was on some uh, Cleopatra meets Game of Thrones house battle. Okay. Okay. So it's giving me Cleopatra at the club, and she comes through the door, and she kicks it open, and everybody's like, <gasps> you know, and it was like, oh, who was that? Who was that? And it's just like, yeah, she comes in with her keep it queen ness, and all the all the kings like kind of like, all right, here she come, about you know, let's. Let this chick walk through. Right. Here she come. Right. It's cooler. And, you know, just letting you know what could happen if you kind of get on my bad side. I can so dig just, it. Don't, just don't. I can. And, you know, and kind of have the uplifting other women in its parts and just right. say, hey, this is what this is what keeping it queen means. Right. And just have fun but be a lady. No, I can dig it. I, that's one of the things that I do like about uh, hip hop particularly with the ladies because I always like the empowerment that comes with certain artists you yes. know that's one of the things that has always drawn me like my favorite uh, hip hop artists female hip hop artists are always the ones who are women mm-hmm. are ladies mm-hmm. um, but don't take no shit from the dudes right Right. But at the same time, they can still keep a certain level of femininity. That's yes. why, you know, ladies first, that's why Ladies First was so dope when mm-hmm. it came out. It's yes. still dope now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I remember the video because the video was different from the, the from the uh from the, the seven inch that they played on the radio, mm-hmm. the radio edit. The video had all the sisters in it. You know what I mean? And so as you were laying out, you know, your vision for the video for that, I'm thinking the ladies first with Queen Latifah and Moni Love and how all of them is in it. So that's 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 real dope. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, because I remember when the I video. I love Moni came, Love. I love her flow, her yeah, accent. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Get it, Moni. It, it, it's just it's just crazy because she's cute too. Yeah, well, you know, she's on radio. She does a podcast on, uh, I think it's on Sirius XM, and I'm not sure exactly, but a lot of times you think these people disappear, but they ain't disappeared. You just got to know where to find them. Yeah, and they just got low key, but they still working. And they low key, and they they, they still doing their thing. So let's talk about female hip hop and female artists. When you go back, because I just kind of named you know, basically, uh, one uh, or two really that uh, that I that I rocked with just as a as a guy, you know. But were there any female hip hop artists that? Because we mentioned some of the guys that you like. Right. Were there any female hip hop artists that you was like, you know, not so much I want to be like her because nobody wants to be and like somebody like, else. But yeah. that's that's dope to you. And so, she likes. So so you so you like Lana Mora. She was the first one. She was like, yeah. just like a test, just, just like a test, just, just like a test. I crammed to understand you. I was like, oh. yeah. she's so dope. Oh, she's so dope. I met her in person. She was so dope. Yeah. Oh, and the Georgie Porgy? Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 Ah. I mean, I, I got, I she mean, I can, exactly I can, the same. Yeah, I can she's go more through, beautiful now than she was <laughs> I can, then. I can go through Damn. her, her, like, like, uh, Eyes of the Soul. Her catalog is Was dope. probably one of my Eyes of the Soul, When in Love. Poor Georgie, mm-hmm. you know, but then you can go back and cha-cha-cha, yeah. you know, and then I'm going to tell you, the, one of the first dope lines, and I hate to separate males and females, but for the purposes of this discussion, I'll, I'll do that. But one of the dopest lines I ever heard a female artist spit, when you said you love me, it doesn't matter. It goes into my head is just chit-chat. Yes, she was like, you ain't <laughs> You may talking. think it's very egotistical, but just very free, but what you say, I take none of it serious. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know, did you see the video? She's on the train, and it goes from black and white yes. to color. I was like, yeah. Oh, she was just like, 
I had that ah oh, moment when she she was like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. 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 So so you like you like you like light. Anybody else? Of course, I like light and salt and pepper. And Roxanne, like the when Roxanne Shante came out, and then the real Roxanne came out, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, this is. I was sitting here like this, like a tennis match, like <laughs> who, who's, who's gonna, gonna win be this, like battle? I think they might have been, and I guess I, I guess I'm telling my age, which I don't have no shame with, but I think the Roxanne battle might have been the first time that. You didn't and know something was coming, and then it just popped up on yep. the radio, and yep. it was a diss record. You was like, "Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you hear Shantae? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, did you hear the real? Mm -hmm. Ooh." I was, I was like glued to the radio. It was just like an IV yeah. in me. I needed it to sustain everyday living. I needed to hear that what was gonna happen, like UTFO, her battle with UTFO. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, what's the clapback gonna be yeah. like? I yeah. need to hear this." Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was crazy because UTFO brought out their own real. Roxanne because Shantae was burying Killing them. Killing them. <laughs> Shantae was killing them. Now, now I'm going to ask you your hip-hop stuff. Now, were you the hip-hop fan that used to tape the music off the radio? Of course I did. You taped it off you the know radio? You used to put the pencil in the cassette to get that extra, you know, yep, get that spot. Yep. first. So when you push record, it will start right at the beginning. And yes, I was holding it up, and I always get mad when the DJ start talking. I'm like, shut up. It messed you up. Shut up. You were supposed to be quiet. It messed you up. Messed now, here go the crazy thing, right? I still have some of my radio edits no, from, the, from the from the 80s. Now. Yeah. I mean, if I go in my crate, I could probably pull out. A few things from maybe 85, 86. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm that guy. Wow. Yeah, I'm that guy. That's crazy. You know, I just hope that the, the tape didn't dry out. <laughs> Basically. And, and it's it, not surprising at all. I'm just trying to make it sound all yeah, I just eclectic to, I just and whatever. I just tried to sound cool. And then y'all just called me like the weirdo all from- All my tapes from 86. That's a lifetime hip hop special. Yeah. Put that on hip hop hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Hosted by Fab Five Freddy. <laughs> He gonna, he gonna come out the box. Yeah, <laughs> special guest, hey, Dr. Dre and Ella. I just want y'all to know it's a hell of a Same outfit here. on he was wearing on your yeah, TV raps. Yeah. Same outfit on. Yeah, so let's get a little bit more into who you are now as the artist, right? Talked a little bit about how you started. Right. Uh, and you eventually ended up being a part of the Fem Seas of Fire. Yeah. Uh, which we'll talk we'll we'll talk about that Damn in a minute. But fire. what were you doing that got you on the radar uh, to be a part of that that group? Because when that group first started, it wasn't just the three of you guys no, that I were started here. Out with six. It was yeah, it was several because but I we remember a group exactly, and and that's kind of what I want you to get into. So tell us about how that whole thing went down. Started as a cipher. Bully invited six different females to a cipher. Again, shout out to Bully Boy Productions. He he was like, Cooler, can you be a part of the cipher? And I was like, okay, it's all girl. I was like, all right, send me the beat. All right, I show up. I was like, huh, it's a lot of people here. I didn't know anybody. Oh, that was my next question. Did you know anybody? No one. I knew no one. Okay. I came to kill. Do you remember approximately when this was by year? What year was this approximately? It's been a few years. Two, three. 2006. This is 17. Six. I want to say. 14 or 15? 15. Okay. It's late summer 15. Okay. Bully, was it late summer 15? I think it was summer 15. I hope Jody or Q, if y'all watching, let me know. If, I think it was 2015. The Cypher. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. Caller, you're live on the show. What's your name? What you want to get in on? Okay, we lost the caller. Aww. Um. I remember because, you know, Jody's been, you know, my sister for, for several years. So I remember I watched it because I was watching supporting her. And I'm watching it. I'm like, yo, like, my little sister's dope, but, like, all of them kind of dope. Like, yeah. all of them is dope. <laughs> you know, and, I'm, you know, of course, all of you all of you all had people who were watching it because they were wanted friends and they wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were like me, you came away because, see, with me, I'm not a big fan of the way hip hop has evolved. I like newer artists that clearly had their roots in old school. Those are the ones that usually get my attention. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm watching not the, as not the mumble rap. 
Yeah, I can't do the mumbles, yeah. <laughs> but as I'm watching the video, you know, a couple of you guys kind of jumped out at me. You were one of them. So let's talk a little bit about how that went down. It was six of y'all. Tell me about how you how you, you got the beat. That's where I you got stopped. the beat. Okay. I wrote my verse. Right. I came ready. And I, I, don't know what, I don't know what I was expecting, honestly. I don't know what I was expecting. So I came ready. I met, my hair was done. I had fresh haircut, <laughs> dress, outfit. I got my makeup done, spit my verses on the drive, like an hour drive from Newport News to Richmond, spit my verse. I was ready, on time, ready to go. I was like, where the cypher at, you know? And I didn't, you know, first time being recorded and all that, like I said, I didn't know what to expect. But, you know, Bully had everything organized, ready to go, you know? We filmed it a couple of times. We spit in the booth a couple of times. I had to learn where your mark was and stuff like that. So that was the first time I ever was recorded video wise and push i was hype i was crazy hype and i just wanted to represent and this was the first time that i switched my flow up a little bit okay because i was like everybody think i'm gonna come to the and the queen and you know i knew everybody was thinking i was gonna come like hard blazing like hard like granite type stuff right. and i was like no i'm gonna switch it up Queen Kong was born that day, that phrase, Queen Kong. Right. I've never referred to myself as Queen Kong until the cipher. Where does that, what does that mean? What is Queen Kong? Like, I'm a beast, but I'm still a lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm... But don't smack test me. The shit. Yeah. yeah, like, don't... No, I got you. No, I, I got with yeah, you. Yeah, but I'm still a lady. Don't get it twisted, you yeah. know? You know, I love being a woman. Right. But I go hard yeah so i embrace my femininity and my daintiness about me but i go beast mode but you so, still smack shit out yeah so queen yeah, kong like was born out of that cipher right no i can and dig it, it stuck so when you say because i don't remember the lyrics the, the phrase queen kong was it something that you said in your verse mm -hmm. so it was something that you said in your verse it goes it goes mm. Queen Kong, also known as Kula Vaughn, also known as the queen of boom bap, the hip, the hop to the break of dawn. And it was just the way that delayed beat and I just hit that Queen Kong and it was like... Yeah, people went... Mm, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Now, eventually, the FEMCs shrunk from the six that were there to the three that was here on Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J a couple of weeks ago. Right. And the three that are going to be on Legacy TV coming up this yeah, Friday. This Friday, yes. This TV. Friday, yeah. Plug, plug, TV. plug. Slip that in on y'all, yeah, right? They yeah, TV. Yeah, Legacy <laughs> TV Friday this Friday on, on Comcast as well as on Verizon here in the Capital City RVA and on YouTube later on. Yes. Kula and Q and Jody will be on TV. But. Yes. Back to the, to, to the origin. So it was six that ended up down to three. How did that happen? Um, some, it just got sifted out that way. Right. And then the three of you guys, y'all came together almost like a Voltron. Yeah. Because y'all so, so different. Transform. You <laughs> nerd. <laughs> it's the Femtron. It's the I, Fembot. I, I, I am. <laughs> Remember how you had the Fembots in the Austin out. Power movies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is some real Fembot stuff right here. So tell us about how the three of you guys come together. Like, what is your, is there identity in each of you, or is it just a free for all? The three of you guys, like, how would you describe your cohorts before you describe yourself? Um, we we are definitely three different entities that happen to mesh well together. It just works. Um, Jody brings she brings this edginess with that with the singing, and it's weird. Her cadences is is so dope, and it, she switches it up. But there's this slight hypnotic. Um, angelical voice behind her. At that was the same a word time. I was going to use, angelic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh, shucks, bitch. I say, I say you with the lullaby. And then she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah. You know, and it comes out of nowhere. Like, it's like a, um, it's like a pretty machete. Right. That's what Jody, that's what Jody is. She's a pretty machete. Yeah. She, she comes and she will slice and dice, but it's like, you don't see it coming because it's wrapped around such pretty littleness. Right. And, you know, that she, when she sings or whatever. Q, she just has this energy. She has this like energy to where it's like, you just want to 
jump around on stage with her. She gets she gets you hyped. Right. Q get me to the point where I get so hyped, I forget where I am in my verse or my breathing <laughs> or whatever, because I just want to bounce around the stage with her, and I want to get litty with Q. And then plus, Q brings this new new energy that we learn from her, the new slang, the new everything. I learn a lot from Q because, and you know. Q's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Q Boogie over there. That's Q Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Q Boogie and Q Stars. That's a, uh, that's a millennial too. Yeah. 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 yeah she's a millennial. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah so it's there like. You go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> so it's beautiful. We all have very distinct styles, but we just have this harmony that works. So what do you bring? I bring. I bring the origin, the like the. Uh, the balance. You know, I guess I wouldn't say the, the more knowledge. Right. You know the foundation part of the hip hop, you know, with the the being experienced through hip hop. Right. You know, so it's best to have somebody who knows hip hop to kind of feel, infiltrate through hip hop right. and be like, this is what the people want to hear. Um we all have different demographics and some of our demographics carry over on each other and my fans become their fans, become my fans, become her fans and and now we feel like we are we are giving hip hop like a three course meal because people are hungry for real hip hop yes. and they get to eat a little bit off Cool Plate, a little bit off Joey Plate, a little bit off Q's Plate. And it's like an old smorgasbord with Fem Season Fire. Right. Like the group concept is dope. You're not going to find anything else like it. Right. One of the things that I thought was outstanding when you guys were here before, uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about this when the three of you are together. I'm going to ask this one last question. I'm going to go back directly to talk about you. But one of the things that I liked was the fact that you all came together as established solo artists. And then you came together to do the group, but you still have your own individual identities as artists. It kind of reminded me of maybe like Wu-Tang Clan or, or New Edition, uh, things of that sort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm dancing to If It Isn't Love inside my head. That's my, my, my favorite dance. You know, y'all know I'm a terrible dancer, but I get to dance that, especially if I have a, a, a reason to dance or amuse or something. I lose my mind in there. But, there you go. Um, but you guys come together as a group, but th you know, but then you can still go back on your own. What's that like as a as a solo and then group and then solo, like moving in between the different it worlds? It keeps you busy. Yeah. It keeps you busy, but it keeps you on your game. It definitely keeps you on your toes. There's no room to slack and procrastinate and get lazy. Right. Because, oh, Kula got a show. Oh, MC's got an interview. Oh, but Kula got a show. Oh, I got to support Jody. Got to go support Q. It always keeps us on our game. It never gives us a moment to slack off, procrastinate. We're constantly learning. Right. We uh, have lessons, you know, that we are establishing within ourselves, within the group. It just makes us better. Right. I feel like it makes us better. Right. Now, I know last week, I guess on Tuesday, you went and did some uh, something that, was it uh, Tuesday Versus? Tuesday Versus. Oh, nice. that was so dope. Tell me about that. Tuesday Versus. Every Tuesday night, starting around 8-ish uh, at the Ethiopian spot. I can't pronounce Adis. it. Adis. Adis. There it is. Adis. That's what it is. <laughs> um, my vocal coach, shout out to AJ, my vocal coach, was always telling me something about Tuesday verses. My homegirl Tori, shout out to Tori, she told me about Wednesday verses in DC. So she was like, You know, they got a Tuesday verses. And I was like, Shut up. Then my vocal coach was like, Yeah, they got a Tuesday verses. You should go. And he was like, You can start building up a cute little following if you go. So I was finally, you know, got somebody to watch the kids for me. My brother, love you. <laughs> and he watched the kids. I went and put my name on a list, and I did my song "Exposed." "Exposed" is a song that I won recently on a um, contest. Shout out to Terrence Fulp for the music and lyric and rap competition. Uh, I that was on November 18th, and I won that contest. Go so, cooler! Yeah, go cooler! Win, yeah, yeah. win the contest! Go cooler! <laughs> win the contest! And so I did, I did the song at Tuesday Verses, and, but I didn't do it with my beat. I kind of let the band jump in, 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And it was kind of hot with them just kind of figuring out what they thought would be the good, a good beat to go with what my verses were compared to what song I already had with the, you know, it was pretty cool. So uh, did you feel comfortable doing it when you were in there? I did feel comfortable. Are you comfortable now on the stage or do you still get nervous? I still get nervous, but I think everybody should get nervous because if you, to me, then that's you losing your humbleness if you don't get nervous because anything can happen. So you should always have your guard up and be humble and be prepared, but you should always have, I'm better than everybody else in this room mentality at the same time. Right. So, you know, balance out your, you know, humbleness versus your ego. My confidence in stage fright is open mic wise, done, but say, cooler, go to Madison Square Garden. I'm going to freak out. I'm going to freak out. I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to cry a little bit. I'm probably going to throw up. It's vomiting on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Hey, look. Kind of stuff. Hey, look. Hey, tell everybody what that is, man. <laughs> I just was watching Bless. that a couple of days ago. That's the 8 Mile. Yeah. Oh, I love him. Yeah. You like, you like Marshall? I'm a very, very avid Eminem fan. All right. Well, let's have, let's have some fun. All right. So I'm going to do my five. I want you to do your five first. Five what? Top five. Top five is Marshall Mathers, Eminem, Slim Shady, B Rabbit, the White Boy. Okay. <laughs> did you did you did, did you really go through all of his aliases? <laughs> I think two of those were made up. No. <laughs> B Rabbit, B Rabbit, B Rabbit. <laughs> uh, hey, he no, okay. Dope. So it's going to go Eminem, Andre Three Thousand, Ti, Miss Hill. I love Ti. I got it, you know. You like Clifford? Uh, most Def, Kanye, yes. Biggie. I think that's more than five. Um, <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to keep going. I don't yeah, care. You keep that's on going. Just who, who I like. Yeah, no, I can dig Lyricist. it. I, I think for me, you know, there, there's there's probably, there's, there's two that never change. Well, there's three for me that never change. And then the other two of the five for me, you know, they fluctuate. Mm-hmm. But the three names that absolutely never, ever, ever change for me is, is Eminem, uh, Redman, mm-hmm. and Rakim. Redman's definitely my top ten. Oh, man. I, I think, I, I think you know, those, those, those three, they mm-hmm. just, you know, they, th- those, they never change Who for me. Two? Say again? Who are the other two? It, it, the, the other two, they vary. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, well, right now, what do you feel about the other two? Um, Probably, probably, you know, knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. All right, KRS. And uh, and you know, you know, I think you, you can't go wrong talking about Chris. Um, and then, honestly, you know, you get a lot of people who disagree with this, but I think Tupac was an outstanding lyricist. You get a lot of people. People. People disagree with that? A lot of people disagree. I'm dis- not a Tupac fan. A lot of people disagree with that. I might get booed for saying that, but, but I'm not Tupac Well, fan. you know, I could dig that. But see, I think a lot of times... People get caught up in the, you know, Tupac after he got out of jail, where he was basically acting a damn fool more times than not. And a lot of the songs that he made in that period are so, you know, vile and misogynistic and and basically gangster that you that you forget, you know, the Me Against the World album was probably a top 10 of all time hip hop record because of. The balance that was on it. It, 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 he just he just went in so many different places, and I just enjoyed the lyricism mm-hmm. in it. And you know that just you know that just happens to be who popped in my head right now. But hip hop is 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 so vast, and there's so many people that you you really you really can't go wrong with anybody you choose. And I always ask the question top five. Uh, but for me, it really is just those three, and then there's everybody else. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? For me, there's there's day. three, and then you know there's Red Man, you know Red Man, Eminem, and Rakim, and then there's everybody else, and there's no real order for those three for me. If I really, if I if I was on an island, I guess this is the question I want you to answer. If I was on an island and and I only had one hip hop artist that I could listen to, and it's not even other music, because you know obviously you know how I feel about Bob Marley and, and others. But if I only could have one hip hop artist, now I could have that person's whole catalog, mm-hmm. but I could have one artist, it would be Redman. It would absolutely be Red. It would be Reggie yeah, Noble. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with him. You, His whole catalog. Said Everything. I, Even I'm the real just like, Marshall Mathers. Oh, I'm, just I'm just a regular, regular guy. guy. I don't know like why all the fuss, fuss about me. me. <laughs> Nobody ever gave a F before. All they did was <laughs> doubt me. <laughs> 
<laughs> now they're trying to run their mouth and try to talk Stop about me. Yeah, yes. that's my dude oh, I'm right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a Thursday Thursday to one of his instrumentals in two weeks. You do what now? Yes. A Thursday Thursday. I try to do a weekly uh, freestyle segment. Uh-huh. I don't want to say freestyle because I write it, but it's just like a quick 16 to a 20 bar. Yeah. And every Thursday I spit something. This week, because of the Cameron Mace debacle, oh, I'm definitely a, pulling out a Cameron instrumental. I'm gonna need to like have those guys <laughs> just to go out away. They just go away, like seriously. It's too old man. Like, like, just came together. You One of them just love to like put together. You know what that reminds me? Uh, it reminds me of Fred and Grady getting into an argument. <laughs> 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 like really, nobody. And one of them was like, we were not attending at the church. Uh, nobody, I'm like, nobody what care that? about Mason. I, like, you know what, Mason? You? you, you, when you decided to go preach. You gave up any right for anyone to ever care about you in hip hop <laughs> ever again, and that's not shade. I'm not throwing shade. And spit at the same time. You he know what I'm saying? Because you tried Welcome that. Back and you sampled Welcome Back Carter. It's yeah. like it didn't yeah. work. It was awkward. It, it, yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, you can't do nah, that. But you in, know in, what I'm saying? In, in, because they're beefing or whatever. I'm doing a cam uh, instrumental. Cam all right, all right. Now just, let me ask you how you would feel uh, if somebody told you that Busy B and Kumo D was coming back with a beef record. Would you want to hear it? No. <laughs> Uh, like Cam, I kind of would. Curious. I don't know. Uh, Busy B and Kumo D. I'm too curious. Okay. Wow, well, 2017. <laughs> now you know I'm what I'm saying. Trying to figure out think, what sunglasses he would but be But I think I did just tell my age just now because yeah, people yeah. don't read yeah. even. Most wild folks wild don't even remember Busy B. The I'm still tripping on the Kumo D part, yo, with the long red trench coat. Now, do you remember? Oh, do you remember the album cover for How You Like Me Now <laughs> with the red Kangol <laughs> under the tire? <laughs> How was that for taking a shot at LL like, Cool J? Oh, he coming for L. He's coming for L oh, hard. So, what oh, you think about hip hop beef, man? It's necessary. Tell me why. Um, cut. Okay, so hip hop, this kind of like poetry beef has been going on for centuries, like Shakespeare times. It was being done then, you know. Like when poets would entertain the monarchs or whatever, and sometimes poets didn't like the fact that the king liked your poem more than the others. Right. So they would kind of have like poem poet battles poet back battles. then. Yeah. So even now, hip hop is just kind of a hip hop is already a kind of a boasty, aggressive kind of music style anyway. Right. So it who was the better DJ? Who was the better B boy? Who was the better uh, MC? Who was the better uh, graffiti artist? It was just always who did I leave one out? No, I like what you did. You see how I did? I, that. I, I, like, I, what I like what you did. I like I like what you did. I like what I like what you did because you. I think you hit all four. I think did I hit all four? I think you hit all I think four. I did. You got the, well. B boying. B boying. DJing. DJing. MC. And graffiti. And graffiti artists. Now, yeah. the B-Boy is basically the breakdown. All the fundamentals of hip-hop children. Yeah. Okay. All the elements, all the steps. Cool it just put some, you know, knowledge because down Because, see, there. I think, and the reason why I, 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 I smiled that way, and I'll be serious for he a second. He had a proud father smile. I so really I did. I, I really did. Because what frustrates me sometimes about hip-hop today is I think a lot of the artists forget the fundamentals. And they forget... The history and they forget where it comes. Now I get, trust me, I get that I sound like an old folk. Totally, trust me, I get it. But you gotta, you kind of gotta understand where you're coming from so that you can understand where you're going. And the fact that you, the, the fact that you, you can spit in 2017 and be as dope as you are, and you know the history and you know the four pillars. Come on, man. Come on, it's necessary. It's like being a ballet dancer but not knowing about. Uh, the first uh, ballet school in England and Russia and, and know about Mar- uh, Mariska Baryshnikov and people like that. As a ballet dancer, you have to know all the core fundamentals from the bar to the first step to like fifth position and all that. You can't just go out there and be like the best ballerina ever. Right. You have to know the foundation. So that's with art, with cooking, with, with dance. It's the same with hip hop. So everything. when you go out there, you come out with this panda mumble rap and they pick you to do a biggie verse and you don't know the biggie verse or you you say biggie was overrated (sighs) when you do that one of them children said that i think that's probably why there's a beef between the new generation and the old generation yeah and i'm not saying that some of that music isn't dope and i'm not saying some of that music isn't necessary for hip-hop because my mom said the same thing when i'm listening to das effects and crisscross and um why they're wearing their pants backwards or inside out. She looked at me the same way I looked at uh, 
all these new mumble rappers now. Like, what the hell are they talking about? But, but none of that, none of the stuff that we had was Panda. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different well, point of view. I guess it is. It's a different point of I view. But back then, even though my mom didn't understand what they were talking about, Das Effects knew what hip hop was. Yeah. They knew the fundamentals. I think there's just a disrespectful level right. of the new hip hop. That makes the older generation mad yeah. because you are being disrespectful right. to something that we help cultivate to get to the point where you could just go ham on ad libs right. on a beat and right. you get streaming views. Pete, Pete Rock is in a beef right now with somebody, and I can't think of who. Waka Flocka. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your I mean, yeah. already your, your name is Waka Flocka. That tells me all I need to know what? about who I think is probably correct in this beef. But <laughs> <laughs> Waka That's the, the black guy that's not black anymore. Yeah, rapper. he's a, he didn't. You know. he's but I black. think that the 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 foundation of their beef is essentially what you just laid out, Kula. The fact that you know Waka Flocka did not come with a lot of respect for the His elders, the right. elders, the previous generation of hip hop, and P Rock basically was like, "Look, young fella." You wouldn't even be in this right. position had it not been for people like me and CL and, and, and others. That's like me going up to uh, Harriet Tubman and, and saying you ain't really do nothing for for, yeah. for, for Re- underground you know, railroad. For the yeah, Man, them people would have the got out anyway. Yeah, well, all you do is run, lady. You yeah, do yeah. That's like so disrespectful. So for you to be like, um, oh, oh, hands, they just mad. Like, no, we helped build this platform for you to get up there and. Ruin it, baby. Yeah, and say nothing. Because you got a 360 <laughs> deal and you think you can't get told. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the other thing I think we have to be mindful of is that everything, and it's not just hip hop, but everything is more lucrative now. Like if you look at just, I got the, the ball game on TV, mm-hmm. you know, we, we, you're not really looking at it, but it's on. We got the ball game on TV right now. Mm-hmm. And if you look at old school ball players from the 80s, you know, they made their money at the end of their careers, but they weren't making money like they making money now. No, no. You know, the the, the the big money stuff didn't happen until the 90s. Mm-hmm. And so if you were a ball player and your career ended in 1989, I lost somebody like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, yeah, he probably made some money, but nothing like these guys are. And it's the same with hip hop. So when you look at and you see, you know, some of these artists you know, and it's no shade towards them. I swear, I try not to have no shade towards them. But most of the time, I, honestly, I, I don't even know who they are. <laughs> you know, I, I don't even know who they are until they get on my radar. And when I get on it, when they get on my radar, I'm like, you know what? That was dope. Yeah, I could dig that. Yeah, that 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 was dope. And one of those artists is Cooler Von Seal. That's me. That was dope. <laughs> that was dope. <laughs> so. As, as we as we move towards a close, I want you to tell us what is in the future for you. What, what, what's coming? Like, where do you say, see, you know, Kula Von Seal saying the next two years? Uh, two years. That's a good, nice, round, even number. Two years, I am going to be pushing myself on my new distribution deal that I won with Protect Your Neck Radio. Uh, Protect Your Neck Records, sorry. I'm going to be pushing a new single with that. Also going to be pushing the mixtape in the distribution, um, be pushing the FM a Fire project. I'm going to be trying to hit more open mics. Um, definitely pushing the Thursday Thursday because I love the Thursday Thursday. Um, being more knowledgeable and learning about my craft as far as how to make that coin, how to help uh, boost and promote other individuals, indie artists, in the RVA area, then I'm gonna matriculate down to the seven seven five seven and just be a support system the way you would like people to support you. But you know, sometimes you gotta support others to get that support yourself. Right, no, I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Our special guest for the night, our sister Kula Von Seal. We playing. Her tracks throughout the night. And, Some uh, of my tracks, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm excited. I'm glad to have you here. You going to rock with us tonight? You hanging out? I'm hanging out. Word Let's up. Let's internet radio station. Word man. up. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to take a break. Uh, and when we come back, we are going to have our Diva Diaries that are hosted by our sister today, the Pooh Diva, who just slipped in during this segment. Yes. I am Marcus J. She is Q. Buggy, she is. Kula Von Seal. She's taking us to break with the song that she won the award for. Tell us about this song. Tell us about this song that you won. 
This song is called Exposed. And Bully, shout out to Bully again for making this beat. Um, this song is about me getting cheated on. And um, it's kind of um, the phases of that breakup process. Um, some grief, some anger, some realization, some depression. And it kind of takes you through like an emotional roller coaster of what happened when I... I got cheated on, but um, it's a real life story too. So yeah, it was kind of like opening up and being a little vulnerable for my fans. About being exposed. About being exposed. About being exposed. <laughs> All right, yes. we're gonna pay some bills, get some uh, some spots in, and then we're gonna go to expose. Marcus J and the crew and you be back in a few. Y'all stay with us. <laughs> 